morning from a grey, drizzly and yet hot and muggy day at La Lande. I'm doing my best to add a little bit of sunshine to the day with my bright yellow dress. And luckily the dahlias are doing their bit too, to add a little splash of colour in the grey. At least the rain will be helping the garden, but I can't help but feel just a little bit stressed about that because we didn't plant the second part of the Jardin Langlaise this year because we were expecting drought. Don't plant, they said. There'll be no rain, they said. And from the moment I didn't plant, it has rained every week. I do understand and accept that if I had planted, it would not have rained. So I do consider myself solely responsible for the lack of drought at the moment in France. So there's at least that. Well, it's, it's less drizzle and more rain now, actually, come to think of it. I uh, might go and start my interior projects for the day. I'm going to get into Bonne Mamas. We've got no guests there today and carry on painting the skirting board. Hence me being in the painting dress. And a lot of you did ask last time I was painting, why was I painting in my nice dress? I decided a while ago that I was sick of painting in old t-shirts that I hated. And so from now on, whenever I have a dress that I loved, that's just been worn too much and needs to be retired, I'm going to keep it for painting. So I get to paint in dresses instead. Just make something fun. Morning, little ray of sunshine. <laughs> what are you up to today? Well, it's flower day today. So um, I'm going to pick some flowers in the garden. Have you seen the weather? Yes. I just. At least it's it. warm out there. Yeah, I might have to take an umbrella, but it needs to be picked because flowers arrived today. But yeah, it needs to be done today. Okay, so it's foraging morning. It's foraging, yes, but I'm having a cup of tea first. So I'm also having a cup of tea and I'm painting. So oh. we've gone we've gone in the same sort of idea, tea and then project. Yes, yes, exactly. This is the Bon Maman bedroom and it's the bathroom of this room that we've been working on for a while. We have the lovely new wallpaper in there. On the way, I'll show you that Philip found a fender for this room, which actually just finishes it off really nicely. It's good that he's got an eye for detail and can sort out the little finishing touches in the rooms like this. This is the beautiful little green wallpaper. It's called Birds and Bluebells. I love the way it feels like stepping into our gorgeous bluebell woods here at Lalande. And so we get to enjoy the bluebells all year round now and not just in April, May. Last time the room was free I painted this green underneath the wallpaper. And today I'm working on the skirting board. And that's going to be this slightly darker green called Hopper. According to Little Green, it's the external woodwork colour from the home of the very famous British playwright George Bernard Shaw. So I've never seen his home, but we now know what his external woodwork look like. And apparently it's a green that's supposed to give the impression of sunlight hitting the leaves in summer. So although it's darker than the garden green that we have on the flat part of the wall, it should be bringing a little bit of sunshine to our bluebell woods. I'll give it a good stir before I start. And you know, sometimes I think that I love the descriptions and the names of colours as much as the colours themselves. I love just reading name charts. I'm starting over in this corner and I have to say I think it's a pretty beautiful colour though actually I don't know if you can see that with the paint pot in the way. I'm doing this with two brushes, my normal size brush and my micro brush. This is one of my father's painting brushes. I kept them all after his death and I use them for all of my edging. He used them for his paintings but they are incredibly useful for edging and it's because of these that I don't need to mask anything when I work. to dry before coming up to do the second coat but already I love the way it grounds the bath. I think it's making a huge difference to the room. 
I love this room. It's getting better and better all the time with our little micro forays in between guests. Whilst that coat's drying, I am running downstairs. I'm going to tell all of you what is happening with the Grand Salon and why we have no beautifully decorated Grand Salon yet. We're really quite a long way off. The architect got back to us with the report of the structural engineer and that's what we've been waiting for because we have one very bad beam, the others are not great either, but one is sagging too much. So much so that the floor of the room above has dropped a little, which means that the wall in that room is not touching the floor and it's not really touching the ceiling either because it's sort of dropped down with gravity, which is why we have to take the walls down in Chambre Perse and Chambre des Oiseaux and why we're not using them this guest season. They're the two bedrooms above the salon and we were very excited to finally be able to start moving when we got the report of the engineer but they gave us the most sensible option which was to fill it with a type of resin inject it with it and put metal along each side of the beam to solidify it that was the cheapest and the easiest option which is why they suggested it but philip and amory were not happy with that suggestion they just felt that it wouldn't do justice to the grand salon and i'll let philip explain why to you the problem that Amory and I had with the idea that the architect first came up with was that, and he also said this, it would probably only last for 40 to 50 years. Now, Amory doesn't really feel comfortable with making this room beautiful and putting all the panelling in for then to have to be removed again in 40 to 50 years. No, it's horrific. Then point. do the main structural problems that then take all the walls down upstairs, which have to come down anyway, and then it's like we're doing work, we're repeating work, basically. No part of me wants to tackle this in my 90s. When it's done, I would <laughs> exactly, like it to be exactly. done. <laughs> I'm not sure if Amory would still be working as a carpenter. He might be retired. But uh, although it's a credential, it's like a very healthy, what do you say? Like um, job security, in a way. <laughs> we come up with a different solution, the three of us together, which is to put in steel beams instead. And I was worried because I didn't want to take out an old ceiling and like lose yes. the history of it. We called the specialist architect, specialist yes. in chateaus and chapels. And he looked and he said he doesn't think that they're quite as old as they seem. He thinks the beams have already been replaced once. And he actually agreed that the best thing for the aesthetics of the room and certainly the best things for the security and longevity exactly. would be to put steels in. So yes. you and Amory were like totally triumphant. <laughs> well, there's several reasons. So there's the, the fact that it's more structurally safe and that it's more more lasting. And besides that, there is another reason. It's aesthetically as well, which is that the panelling is 18th century, and the 18th century panelling would probably not or not often have gone with a 16th century in style. Yeah, plafond ceiling. à la France, Française, exactly. yeah. They would have had a plaster ceiling. And when you moved in, this is actually three different rooms. You had the corridor there, where we're standing now was the laundry room, for some reason, it doesn't make any sense. Lovely terrace access. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful laundry room. Best laundry room ever. <laughs> exactly. But then there was a wall here, and everything behind me, correct, was the grand salon. Yeah, it was a very, very small grand salon behind it's, there. Yeah, and but, but it had a plaster ceiling. Yes. So it, it would be very in keeping with the chateau to put a plaster ceiling back. I was actually pleased at the time because we gained ceiling height by discovering this below the plaster when we took down all of those little extra 19th yeah. century walls that had been put up. The plaster ceiling had been added in the 19th century and then we realised that we gained a little bit of head height there but of course if we remove these beams as the architect says he thinks we should the plaster ceiling can go higher than it used to be. Exactly and that is another and I think it's probably the most exciting thing about the entire operation. There's another huge benefit which is if we go with the steel beams and if we go with the plaster ceiling there's a very exciting change that can happen upstairs. Yes. Sure, Charles? Yeah, yeah let's, let's go. <laughs> now the two bedrooms that you talked about were Chambre des Oiseaux which is right there and Chambre Perse with three of these doors to the left. So these doors are old yeah. Mm -hmm. These doors are I'm guessing 18th century, what do you think? Maybe even 17? older. Yeah, 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 that older. There is three sets of these doors in the chateau. There's one set here, one set here, and one set to Bon Maman. They're exactly the same. This would have been the original entrance to Chambre Pets, and you would have immediately stepped into the bedroom. Or reception room, because at the time, the family lived on the first floor. But if you stand here, after you, why, thank you, sir. This is the bedroom now. It's really weird. You've got beautiful window there. Yes. Lovely window there. Yes. Fireplace. Yes. Wall. Mm-hmm. 
Uh oh. It's not symmetrical. Now, nothing in this chateau is symmetrical, but it wouldn't have been this asymmetrical. <laughs> so we'd like to put this window back to the original big size, remove that wall, and then Chambre Perse will finally be reunited with its two windows flanking the fireplace. And it'd be lovely if we have the that would look lovely. opposite the fireplace. Yeah, it's it would look, look great. It's going to look much more balanced, basically. Yeah. And um, also, I like putting things back the way they were. The fact that there's no <laughs> outline of the original window is going to make, I think, a huge difference on the facade as well. So, basically, there's a bathroom here at the moment that is shared between Perse and Des Oiseaux. Mm -hmm. Des Oiseaux does not have its own And we're about to get rid of that bathroom. We're getting rid of that bathroom to put Perse back to its original size. So, we've got two bedrooms that do not have a bathroom. We do not want to lose either of the bedrooms, otherwise Des Oiseaux will make a lovely ensuite. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a bit big. But we have this, got this massive, weird corridor. Big enough for a grand big piano. Big piano. And two three incredibly big wardrobes. And, I mean, frankly, there's space for walls, I think, darling. So if you would like to walk down the so we can ask Maria to play the piano. So the idea is that we'll move this door here. Yeah, and that's this one. This exactly. door that so comes into the room. the same together. Yes. Different door there. And then here, we've got a little entrance area, two pets. With the doorway here into the bathroom, which will take up sorry, just a bit more take up this much space. Yeah. Just about. But a little gap because we need to get to this bedroom. And another bathroom here. So this way we've got Pets back to his original size. This was always still a bedroom, and they both have got en suites. Perfect. It is really good. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> mic drop! So I'll show you downstairs why we have to do it that way. Okay when we were actually still using the room as a, you know, usable space instead of a... Building site. <laughs> building site slash storage <laughs> facility. You could hear everything that was happening upstairs down in the car tunnel. Yeah, every footstep. Yeah. Ex exactly. Every door, every footstep, every time someone flushed. <laughs> so I think... Not ideal. Not ideal. <laughs> and by... Because we have to take the floor up anyway to replace the steels, we can put in proper sound insulation. So, you know, you can't hear if we're laughing down here, you can't hear yeah. upstairs, yeah. and vice versa. If we're playing music in the car salon late at night, exactly. it won't disturb the people and in the bedrooms as well. probably insulate the waste pipes so you can't actually, you know, hear someone press the button. So Amory is going to start as soon as the guest season is over because yes. he has to take up the entire corridor floor above, which means that no guests would be able to walk to their bedrooms, which jump. means, yeah, yeah jump! <laughs> put a pole in the middle, you know? Like, 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 uh, yeah. yeah, so he has all of this enormous task ahead of him. He's done it before with his, you know, your aunt's and uncle's house? Yeah, yeah, so, no, it's, he's so good at I it. I think he's the right person. It's amazing. When I see him tackle projects around the chateau, I just don't understand how he's doing it. I think that's because I've never had a head for maths. I was really bad at it in school and I've got a sort of mental block. I'm in awe of people who can do calculations like this. It's really awful when you're bad at something in school, it creates this mental block throughout your life that you just think you're bad at something and it might just be that you didn't gel with a particular teacher. So I was determined to prove to myself that actually there was nothing wrong with my mind, I can grasp mathematics and recently I found a free and easy way to do just that and that is with Brilliant and they've kindly offered to sponsor this video with this ad. Now, for those of you who don't know what Brilliant is, it's the best way to learn maths, data science, and computer science totally interactively. It has thousands of lessons from basic, thank goodness, to advanced, who knows if I'll ever get there, and lots of lessons are added to it every month, and it has done the impossible. It has made learning maths fun for me. I never thought I would be able to say that. I've chosen to learn quite basic maths. We've started with equations and already I understand variables and expressions and I can't believe it. I'm getting the answers right almost every time. Suddenly being able to learn at my own pace in my own time is making the world of difference. If you'd like to try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, then go to brilliant.org forward slash the Chateau Diaries or click the link in the description box below. And on top of that, the first 200 of you will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Right, let's go back to dreaming about the Grand Salon now. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when these panels are up? I'm already furnishing it, darling. <laughs> That's the second coat done and it makes a huge difference. I'm really liking the colour. And there'll be a dado along here in the same colour. And now we just need to debate about whether the door and the architrave change colour or not. Vivian is about to leave, so I want to go and say goodbye. 
So, um, um happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh my goodness gracious me. Well, you, you didn't no want cake. cake. No cake. No cake. What can we do if you it's don't want cake? Birthday, you were great for nine. Yeah! Majestically done. Now we left two on, maybe. Yeah. Perfect birthday, Melon. Well, I mean, obviously, I have to have a bite of this beautiful cake. Yeah. And what's really Very fascinating. Too, so, Stephanie has actually made beautiful cakes herself this week, and I've resisted, and I've resisted, and I've resisted. <laughs> I can have a bite of this. It feels wrong that on your birthday, you are giving us gifts. Not at all, because you have put me up for an entire week. <laughs> I feel like I'm a real love launder now. Yours is a silly gift. It's a fun, artsy gift okay. that I designed historically inspired by the way philip you have a, you have a real your gift is a good gift a wow really good okay gift. all right this one's a fun gift this was inspired by you Thank and you. by me and by some of our friends mm -hmm. <gasps> that is <laughs> so cool oh wow chatelaine du jour with wellies yes oh this is so good it's perfect so she's doing the cleaning she's doing the gardening yes and the sewing. The sewing. <laughs> she does like to read, of course. Oh, She's of course. an intellectual. Oh, yes, yes. Because I have to have prototypes for yes, everything before course. we yes. sell. And so now I, I have these it. wonderful gifts to give my friends who inspired the gifts in the first place. Look, Chateau Love, Edition Vivian Bart. That's wonderful. And of course. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. So there's music, macaron, and champagne, men. and men. <laughs> yeah. And men. And, dresses. And, and friends who love to dance and sing oh. in the background. So did you put together various engravings? Exactly. So I used old engravings, and then I added modern elements, and then there's a lot of just design work with Photoshop and things like that. It's mm. super, Vivian. It's yeah. so good. I love it. I just love her with our wellies on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's, like, that's the reality, isn't it? This is, this the is what we yes. dream of exactly. and occasionally happens nowadays. We're getting into the part where we can have the, the this parties. This is time why time. we do this. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what the last 18 years have been like. Yes. It's not taking oh. itself too seriously, but it's still meant to be obviously historically it. inspired. Yeah. Thank you so much. I can feel like I can't wait to see what you've got. Okay. You know it's that one. Yeah. This is something that I talked about with you a long time ago, and you're like, oh, that sounds great. When you launch your shop, I'd love to get one. But I thought you should just have one because Thanks you are so such a good friend and also such a wonderful host and That's really sweet. an amazing person. And so I, I hope you enjoy it. It's beautiful, Vivian. Vivian, it's exquisite. This is from the turn of the century. It oh, is the Grand Tour bracelet. A Grand Tour bracelet. People uh, over the last 150 years would go on the Grand Tour of Europe, of course, like yes. Stephanie's Grand, Grand Tour. Tour. And they would collect these little panels. These ones are I made in France. I didn't know about the bracelets. And then they've got this incredible enamel. And the thing that I love about them is that these ones are from different regions of France. Mm -hmm. And they've got all of the things that we love. They've got royal symbols. They've got fleur de lis. They've got lions. The Art Nouveau writing on the back dates the bracelet. But also, these bracelets were most common around the Art Nouveau turn of the century time period, around 1900 to 1915. I like how masculine yes, it is sure. because of the heraldic symbolism, yes, I think. Exactly. That's my favourite one. Even though I'm guessing they were for women originally. It could be that they were unisex. I like it a lot. Me too. You. It almost looks medieval. I'm so pleased. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, my <laughs> knight in shining armour. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you. Oh, Thank you so much. You're welcome. I have two or three others currently available that I'm going to be selling. Mm -hmm but none of them are the same. Your shop will be up by the time this video goes live, won't it? It is absolutely meant to be, and we're very excited. Chateau-love.com, <laughs> Exactly. Right? Chateau-love.com. Mm -hmm. Good name. Oh, and by the way, I was not expecting you to mention any of this I know in your you video. Yeah. I know. And I'm thankful. <laughs> So much. So I look, come on. Yeah, Everyone's so cool. going to love going Absolutely. to look at what you've created. Hey, so there's a boy version, right? There is a boy version. Listen, Chatelain, mm. Chatelaine. <laughs> I am not discriminating. This is for all of the Chatelain out there. Awesome. There's a boy version. So I do really need to leave now. I do have my own chateau that means <laughs> I've got my own plants to water at home. And sadly, I don't have a, uh, a Kirsty and a Pavlina waiting for me at home.
Yeah. You think, oh, no. I have a Simon who's going to be like, when are you coming home and watering your plants? Thank you very much. <laughs> Philip and I just came out for a little pre-dinner aperitif. We were having a rosé in the English garden and we saw the other peacocks. So we thought, oh, I wonder how Sif's getting on on the eggs. Let's go and check. She's all right. And then we were so disappointed when we walked up because we saw that one egg was broken and one was not and she disappeared. So I thought it was an animal that had got the egg. Then we noticed that three of the eggs had been broken and one had been abandoned. And Philip started looking around and we found her in the bushes. I do not know how Philip managed to spot her. Can you see her just, just there? There she is. You can just see her keeping a very, very watchful. Oh, I can see a chick. Do you see a little chick? Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. We can see one chick. We don't know about the other two. I don't know how long ago they hatched. So now we're going to try to walk her gently into the walled garden as we did last year, because the chicks are too small to fly out of the walled garden and she won't fly out without them, which means that they'll be safe from foxes. Other predators can still get there, of course. They could still have perhaps a ferret going in, but historically in the past, the chicks in the walled garden have been safe, so fingers crossed. This is the problem about having animals that are completely free. It makes them so vulnerable when they're just born. We really want to give them a bit more protection. So we're waiting for Marie to come and help us. I don't want to get any closer. I don't want to stress her in the meantime. There is definitely at least one chick alive. You came running straight from the kitchen. Are you cooking dinner? Yeah. Okay, she's over there. So give her a wide berth. Come around to me here is okay. Philip's closing all of the gates inside the walled garden. The plan is that we just need to usher her from in those bushes there just into that door. That's it. Okay. On paper, it sounds easy. Is, are they just hatched? We have no idea. She's with at least one chick alive. I saw him. She's just literally just, just in there. Oh, yes. It might be okay. There might be another two. I hope so. Fingers crossed. It doesn't really go well when they hatch outside the garden, does it? No, that's it. That's why we want them in the safety of the garden. Yeah. Okay, Teresa is coming. Ah, oh, there we are. Oh, Hi. this is very, very glamorous attire oh. for peacock wrangling. <laughs> I'll go and stand in that gap over there so she doesn't go this way. Do you want to herd her out of the bushes? All right. If the two of you stand here, so make sure that she's going that way to that yeah. door. She can fly, but the chicks cannot. Yeah. Um, worst case scenario, we have to pick up the chicks and put them inside. She'll go to them. We can pick them up, but it, hopefully we won't have to. She won't be disturbed by... She'll be disturbed, but she will always follow the chicks. Oh, okay. There we go. Do you want me to oh, look at those three. There's three. <gasps> what good news. Are they following her? No, they're staying, staying put. Please don't stand on a tree. Well done, Therese. Oh, Therese. Oh. <gasps> Got one. Oh, yeah. So yeah. young. That's so cute. Oh, this one is yellow. Oh, so oh. oh. That's the most adorable thing I've ever seen. Okay, Marie, do you want to go to the walled garden with yours? Yeah. Maybe take the long route. Go. You just just walk. If you walk in there, she might follow her because else she'll hear them. There's one. One more here. She'll follow you. Okay, but... There's the other one. He's there. Okay. They can walk together. Yes. Come on, come on. Keep going. Spring your own good. Keep going, keep going. Yes, keep going. Little one follow. She's going, she's going. There goes the little one. Oh, there's the one. You have to pick this one. Oh no, he's going, he's going, he's following. I think we should call them a Huey, Dewey and Louie. Okay, I don't think we've spoken about the exciting fact, darling, that there are different colours. They're I all know, different colours. Come on, come on. There, they're reunited. Oh, good job. There. Oh, oh. We've got a blonde pea chick. This has never happened before. Why do we have a blonde pea chick? Maybe the milk, milk pea cook. They're all kinds up there. Are they all? Uh, the many more over there? No, there's just three. There were only four eggs and one didn't hatch, so that's a full full set. 
Okay. They are just beautiful. I don't want to get any closer to film because I just don't want to disturb her any more than we've had to. That's uh, Philip chasing a peacock over there. We just saw Hansel trying to peck at one of the chicks. We are very worried about that. Is that your sh slipper? <laughs> <laughs> Therese has moved the chicks because she was very, very distressed at the other peacocks coming and showing too much interest. So, well, we've tried to find a nice hiding spot. She is now behind the lavender and the courgettes in the vegetable garden. Look, he's just looking. He's like, nah, not my problem. Yeah, Thor's always very peaceful. But Thor, can you try and protect her, please? You did have some part to play in this. Good job, Therese. Thank you very much. You were basically the peacock champion. Oh, thank you. It's like she accidentally got a duckling. Yeah. Feels like it's Easter. That feels much safer, doesn't it? Yeah, let's just leave her in there. I hope the two younger peacocks don't come back because they were being quite aggressive. I think it was curiosity. Yeah, but they started chasing. This yeah, it's so not right. Yeah. I felt like they were like, oh, this is my mummy. Mm, yeah, we <laughs> don't want any newcomers. Does that branch of the pear tree count as the first bit of fruit growing on the new pergola? And we think it does. It's pretty magical. And I'm going to go and show you the grapes because I can't believe how many there are this year. This is just one of the vines. It's just carry on all the way down the pergola and they're laden. Just a few more weeks and we will have bunches and bunches of delicious grapes. There are baby apples all over the new apple trees. The honeysuckle is out too. Okay, the next problem of the evening is getting all of the chicks into bed. They used to go all of their own accord, but they don't anymore, do they? No, they don't, so I have but to. They're not chicks anymore, they're little chickens. Excuse me, little chicken. Come on, darling. No, no, this is not the way to go. Hey, come on, darlings. You're on the wrong side of the fence. They look so healthy. They do. Okay, at least they're all in now. As I was looking at them, all very obediently actually tonight, running into their little home where they'll be safe for the night, I noticed that the two hazelnut trees above them are covered in hazelnuts. So I'm not sure how long we'll have to wait there, but absolutely covered. I sent some sort of hazelnut cakes coming on in the autumn. Raspberries. Yes, yellow yes. ones. Thank you. You're welcome. They're all for you. Oh, no, no, no. No, I had some. Are you sure? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. I will not say no to a fresh raspberry. <laughs> what an unexpectedly exciting evening in the vegetable garden. I only went out for a glass of rosé. On the way in, I wanted to see if there were any ripe blackberries. Obviously, most of them are looking very red. But I just glanced up and I think we are in luck. Oh, and it's a very, very fat one. What a triumph. Marie, this is so delicious, oh. uh, though very weird on such a hot day to have a shepherd's pie. <laughs> Philip, would you like to explain to us whilst using your elegant carafe? Yeah, it's lucky we've got all of those nice ones. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we having shepherd's pie? I like shepherd's pie. <laughs> you are Marie so asked nice. what should I make and I said shepherd's him. pie. Yeah. In the middle of summer. It's, it's so good. exactly what I need. It's exactly what we need to celebrate the pea chicks. Quite right. Yeah. Uh, the minute we got in, Philip went straight for the, oh. you're sitting on now, the Pea Chick Bible. Yes. And you have discovered something exciting to tell everyone. Yes. So this is talking about white peacocks as well and about all the different colours. And I did some research and apparently our little yellow Pea Chick is going to be a white peacock. Yes, that's what we were hoping for. Yay! And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> And also, really importantly, it said in there that quite often... The pecking. Yeah, yes. the pecking does happen out of curiosity. A little bit. At it the beginning. It should not be to hurt it. It should not be like to pr to try and crush it. Mm. But if it happens once or twice, it's just out of curiosity. Okay. But I still think it's good that we scared them off. Because now they're hidden safely and under their mother. And yeah. she'll peck at them. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, they're safe now. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, Marie. This is exactly what I needed on a sweltering day in summer. Bon appétit. What have we done to deserve this? Is this a celebratory peacock cake? 
Yes, I think so. And we've had a handful of uh, blackberries in the garden, which was ripe. So I thought, why not use them? Quite right. Yeah, there's so many. Every time I go out there, I steal one. <laughs> yeah, they're delicious. They're really tasty. So I thought I'd make a little pie. Looks super pretty. Look, great though the game's been. I think we need to taste the cake. Yes, I would love to taste what, the cake. What was the clue? It was Neptune. Yeah. I'm going in. Enjoy. Thank you. On a busy no, it's mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Choice. Really good. Mm. Our friend is back. This is Mr. Toad who joined us for one of the guest dinners. Todrick Toad. Todrick it is. Todrick, sorry. Todrick Toad. You gave me quite a scare the other night, gentlemen. Do you want to know why? Nothing you did. Would you like to tell everyone what I heard when I was upstairs in my room the other night? I was working quite late <laughs> and I suddenly heard, ah! Now get out, come on, pull it together. <laughs> you were was... telling the toad to pull it together. I know, I almost stepped on him. Oh. Oh. I, was, I was upset. I knew that because I also heard you continue your conversation with the toad and say, you'll just get hurt if you stay here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think he's made a friend. He's, he's back. He's I'm back. surprised of the amount of like toads and frogs we have over in the It's incredible. Pond. I don't know why you're not with them having fun. Here. I, I, I wonder what the grand toad toll is. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, good night, everyone. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us for another day of Leland Life. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all the patrons of the Chateau Diaries. And if you haven't seen it yet, this week's patron video is the announcement of this year's patron days. So please check that out and let us know as soon as possible if you can join us here in August. We would absolutely love to see you. And I also show you some adorable tiles that everyone in the Chateau made for me with Vivian from Chateau Love as a surprise. Today I'd like to say a huge thank you to the Dauphins and Dauphines of Leland, Sharon, Kendall Price, Tamara Price, Lisa Puccillo, Carol Quimby Bonan, and Armin Rahman. Thank you so much to all of you, and lots of love to everyone. I can't wait to see you all again on Thursday.